Hi and welcome to my tutorial on PySpark. If you are watching this video, I assume that you know what Spark and Hadoop is, but don't know how to actually interact with Spark. Uh, in this video series, we will learn how to work with PySpark, the official Python driver for Apache Spark. In order to get the most out of this course, you should have a basic understanding of Apache Spark and Linux. Also, you should know the very basics of data. I don't assume that you have any practical experience with Spark or Hadoop in general. Let me state this one thing very clearly. This is not meant as an introduction on how to properly set up a Spark cluster or how to admin it. This course is focused on how to use the PySpark module. In order to be productive, you must also know how to set up and configure a Spark cluster, of course. And for this, I highly advise you to watch my video series on how to set up and configure a Hadoop uh, cluster with Apache Spark. This course is outlined in several sections and each section will talk about a um, distinct feature. And in this section, we will start with downloading and configuring Spark. We will work with Debian on a virtual machine and you should have either a Linux machine or a virtual machine with an up-to-date Linux distribution on it. All right, right here I have a fresh install of Debian on my virtual machine. So first I'm gonna log in with my personal account and then we have some stuff to do. So I'm gonna use the default settings. Let's get rid of that panel down there. All right, bring up the terminal emulator. First, we're gonna lock in as sudo, uh, as um, the root user, sorry, to make sure that I give sudo rights to my personal account. So, That command will grant sudo rights to my personal account. And let me just gonna log out and log in again to for it to take effect. All right, bring up the terminal again. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install some drivers for the VM. So you can see this in full screen. Um, if you're not using a virtual machine, you don't have to do that. So sudo apt install open hyphen vm tools, provide the password. Yes, I want to install it. All right, and you will now see everything I see in much higher resolution. So I'm gonna increase the font size a little bit so you can actually see stuff. And let's use green on black colors. All right, that looks much better. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a Spark user and we're gonna install Spark into to that Spark user's home directory. Of course, you could also choose to install um, Spark globally for other users. So first let's create the Spark user. So we're gonna use the add user command. Of course, we need pseudo rights for that. And we're gonna add the user Spark. Now I'm gonna choose a password for that. Uh, you can ignore this. And yes, that is correct. All right. Now let's log in as that user. So su hyphen Spark type in the Spark user's password. And as you can see, we are locked in as the Spark user. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install Spark. And for that, we first gotta download it. Now we can open up an internet browser. So open up the web browser. I'm just gonna Google Apache Spark and yeah, there is spark.apache.org. Now click the download button right over there and select a recent version of Spark. So I'm gonna choose 3.0.1, that's the most up-to-date version. And since we are not going, going to connect our Spark cluster to a Hadoop cluster, um, you can. It, it actually doesn't matter which Hadoop version you choose. So we're just gonna stay with 2.7. And if you're interested in setting up a Hadoop cluster um, with Spark, uh, you can watch my video series on that. All right, now click the download link right over there where it says download Spark. And it presents us for a or with a mirror for Spark, so right over there. Now, don't click that link, um, just copy that link. So I'm just gonna say copy link location. 
And we are doing that because we want to download Spark via the command line. All right, go back and let's get into the terminal again. Now remember, I am logged in as the Spark user and I'm inside the Spark home directory or Spark users home directory. All right, so let's enter wget, enter the download link, and this will download Spark to the Spark users home directory. So it should be done pretty quickly. All right, now Spark will be downloaded and we will see a compressed file in our home directory. So if you put in ls, you will see that we have this Spark 3.0.1 um, compressed file. And next we're gonna unpack that file. So you can use the tar command for that. And we're gonna use the xzf option. So this will extract the file. And we just provide the path to the compressed file. Hit enter. Now that will take a few seconds. And there you can see we now have a new folder which holds all the Spark binaries. Next, we're gonna remove the compressed file since we won't need that any longer. And afterwards, we're gonna move into the Spark folder. So first, let's remove the compressed file. So rm, make sure you remove the compressed file, not the folder. So let's remove that. So we only have the folder. Then we go into that folder. And the nice thing about Spark is, is that it would actually work out of the box. And since this, this video series is about getting to know PySpark and not the various configuration options for our Spark cluster, I will keep the folds whenever possible. However, we will make one short but important adjustment. Now, if you would start Spark right away, it would use our system's default Python. However, this would be Python 2. And since we don't want to interfere with our system's Python, we want to create a virtual environment that we are going to use especially for Spark. Now, you can create a virtual environment of Python 3 by uh, running a simple command. However, we need to install something for that. Now, remember, the Spark account does not have pseudo rights. So let me minimize that window over there and bring up a new terminal window. And as you can see, I'm locked in with my personal account that has pseudo rights. And we're going to install. So we're going to enter sudo apt install. And what we want to install is python3 hyphen vnv. Tell your password. Yes, we want to install that. And that piece of software um, will give us the possibility to actually create virtual environments for Python 3. Now this is installed, we can close that down. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a virtual environment. And the command for that is actually pretty simple. So we're gonna use Python 3. Now this would use our systems Python 3. And we say hyphen m vnv. And then, and then you gotta enter the path to where the virtual environment should be saved to. So we want to save that virtual environment into the Spark users home directory. Now remember, we are locked in as the Spark user right here. So I'm gonna take the shortcut for the home directory. And then I'm just gonna call it virtual VNV. Hit enter, and it's done. We now have a separate Python 3 environment in our home directory. And this is especially important since we're going to install a few libraries via pip. And doing that for our systems Python might actually break Linux. Now I've been there and I've done that. Okay, we're going to install the following modules, PySpark, Pandas, and NumPy. So, however, we first need to activate our environment and you do that via the source command and then you give it the path to your virtual environment. Now rem remember that was in our home directory, virtual env, bin, and then you go to activate. And this is just a, an executable file. All right, as you can see, we are now using bash with our virtual environment and you can see that right over there. Uh, we can now issue a pip command and the modules will be installed to that virtual environment. Now, before we install those modules, I'm just gonna install another module and that one will be wheel, which makes installing those other modules easier for pip. So I'll just enter pip install wheel. And next we are going to install PySpark, pandas, and numpy. So enter pip install PySpark, pandas, NumPy, hit enter. 
Now this might take a while. All right, that is done. And we now have PySpark, Pandas, and NumPy ready to use. Now let me clear the screen. All right. Before we start configuring Spark, make sure you know where to actually find your new Python interpreter. So just enter which, oh, sorry, which Python. So it's in. The Spark uses home directory. It's under virtual env and then in the bin folder and then it's just the Python executable. All right, after all this hassle, let's start configuring Spark. CD into the Spark folder and more specifically, CD into the conf folder inside the Spark folder. So we are already in the Spark folder. Now, if you're not, let me just go back into the home directory real quick so you know what I'm doing. So again, we have two folders in our home directory. It's the Python virtual environment and the Spark folder. So go into the Spark folder and inside the Spark folder, you will see a conf um, folder and navigate into that folder. All right. Now you can see some configuration templates. And we can create our own configurations just by renaming those files. First, let's create spark-env.sh by running the following command. So we're going to say cp spark-env.sh.template. And we're going to copy that file to spark-env.sh. Next, open up that file with a command line editor like nano. So I'm going to say nano spark env.sh. Open up that file. And here we basically just want to add a single configuration to the end. So go all the way to the end. And here we're just going to add export pyspark underscore python equals. And now you got to enter the path wherever your virtual environment is. So it's home, spark, virtual env. Then remember, Python is in the bin folder and inside that bin folder, it's just the Python ex executable. All right, so this command will create the pyspark underscore Python environmental variable and it will hold the path to the actual Python we would like spark to use. And if we would not set that, Spark would just use the systems Python version. And we certainly don't want that. Uh, now exit that file, since that was basically the only configuration we wanted to make. So we're just gonna hit Control X. Yes, we want to save that. And next we must tell Spark to create a slave on localhost whenever we want to fire up the cluster. Now simply copy the slaves.template file. So we're gonna say cp slaves.template and just save it under slaves. And we can have a quick look inside that file. So I'm going to say cat slaves and pipe that into the less program. All right, there it is. Now down there, so this is already the end, down there, over there, um, we would list all the IPs of machines we want to create slaves on. In a cluster, that would mean to add the IPs of those machines in here. Notice that for that to work, we need to enable passwordless SSH. We also have to do that for localhost. Hence, we need to create an SSH key and append that to the approved keys file on the same machine. So again, this is just a file holding all the IPs where we want to spawn slaves on. And this will be single node clusters. So we're just gonna host a single worker or a single slave um, on localhost. And in order for us to do that, we need to enable passwordless SSH on this computer for itself. Okay, so first let's go into the home directory, All right? And next I want to create a key for SSH. So enter SSH hyphen keygen hyphen T RSA. And yes, we can save the key to the home folder into the dot SSH uh, folder and call it ID RSA. And we don't need a passphrase. All right. So we can accept the default path and we don't want to use any passphrase. Next, we must append that key to the authorized keys file inside our SSH folder. Now do that by entering the following command. So we're gonna cat the content inside the hidden SSH folder and we're gonna use the id underscore rsa pub file and we're gonna append that to the following file dot inside the dot SSH folder and it's called authorized, no, 
make sure you spell that correctly, authorized underscore keys. All right. Now this will append the content of the id underscore rsa.pub file to the end of the authorized keys file. Note that on a fresh install of Linux, that file probably doesn't exist. Hence appending is equal to creating that file. And we can do a small test drive to see if everything is working. So just enter ssh spark at localhost, hit enter. And it might ask you to trust the connection, especially if you're doing it for the first time. And if it connects without prompting for a new password, it works. So yes, we're gonna trust that. And it is connecting without prompting for a password. Now Spark will be able to spawn a worker in this machine. And we are now set to actually start Apache Spark. And that will be the content of the next video.